YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in my Let's Make a Retro Game series. Uh, sorry for the long gap in these, I've had many, many issues um, getting this ready, but I've prepared the material for several episodes. This is the second time I have recorded this. I lost uh, several episodes due to a hard drive failure. So we have a brand new, freshly built computer here, uh, has all my dev tools on it. Um, I've listened to the previous feedback. We hopefully have the font um, a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see what's going on. Now, um, accompanying this episode, yeah, there is a downloadable uh, version of the source code that contains a start and an end folder. So you can either uh, follow along as I go through uh, the episode now or you can go straight to the end and play with the finished result but obviously you'll get more out of um, doing the step by step also uh, I have completely renovated my website um, uh, slowly adding to the content but there is a section there for let's make a retro game and each episode has an accompanying uh, short summary and a downloadable document that has more detailed instructions on what we cover in each of these episodes uh, now this particular episode, um, we're going to get some movement happening. We get some stuff happening, which is um, which is exciting stuff. Um, so let's first have a look at our code at the moment. So I'll go to the top here. So it's our Mega Blast uh, ROM. Very sad. The original copyrights 2014. I've been taking too long of these. I know. So we have all our startup here. We've gone through all this before. Uh, so look at the previous episodes. Uh, so all this is all I start up, getting everything set up. Then we display our title screen. We wait for a joystick press, and then we display our main screen after loading our character set. And um, once we've displayed our main screen, so there we go. We put our ship on the screen, which is this section here. Uh, our main ship sprite is made up of two sprites, so we put, we have to set two lots of sprite information. Our um, Y, our X, our pattern and our colour is our last thing. Um, and then the same thing for the second sprite. Right. Um, oh, actually I said that around the wrong way. It's, it's colour then pattern. A uh, couple of little setup things, and then we get to our main loop, which is uh, where we'll be concentrating here. So here, once per tick, which is once every time uh, there has been an update of the screen. It's not necessarily straight away. Um, we are going to do our logic to move things around. So I'm just going to grab, rather than me, you watch me type. I'm going to grab some prepared code. And these are the routines we'll be adding. So we're going to move the player, fire the player bullet, and move the player bullet. So just for the start, we'll leave these two in. I just wanted to put them in so I could show you. We'll put a semicolon in front of them, which will rim them out. And we'll get move player working first. Right, so... Um, get my little bit of code right so I'm going to once again rather than you watch me type so just obviously outside our main lobe here is where we can put um, some more code so I'll just add a space here and I'll put in our move player routine so detect joystick direction and move the player accordingly so we call our handy joy der function which returns a bitmap of which um, directions on the joystick are pressed. Um, well, we put, and that comes back in our A register, we put it into the C register, and we look at bit one. So that, that basically go, it tests to see whether bit one of what is stored in C, uh, whether or not that is zero or one. And that'll set our flags. So we're going to jump relative. If it's zero, which means it's not set, it's not right. That's why I've done n right, not right. I suppose I could have done not right in full text. You can do that as well. 
then I'm going to comment here move to the right so how do we move to the right well we need to move our sprite which is our X coordinate so remember our um, ship is the very first sprite and the second uh, memory location is the X location so we go and get the current X location put it into A and we compare it with 242 because we want to make sure that our ship doesn't go off the right hand side of the screen if there is so what when you compare something and this is going over stuff I've learnt before what it, what it does is actually subtracts that number from what's in A it, and it throws away the result doesn't hurt A but all it does is set some flags for it so it takes whatever in A just subtracts 242 if we get a carry it means that our number is smaller than that one um, smaller than or equal to so, oh, sorry no it has to be smaller than if we get no carry then uh, we are equal to or larger than that number and we don't want to move any further right if we are so we jump to not left down here which takes us right down the bottom but if we are inside that range we want to increase the value of a by one so rather than go add a comma one uh, which takes up more memory and is slower we just increment a which will just add one to it and then we load that x value into both sprite 0 and sprite 1 and that will move that will adjust the x coordinate of both of those and then we jump from not left we could actually just go return there as well but I'm allowing for other controls um, so we might want to um, look at the up and down later on uh, not that we probably will in this game but okay so if it wasn't right then we test bit 3 and that's wherever or not the joystick has been pressed left so if it's 0 it hasn't we jump here and we come out and we do nothing if it is then we see whether we want to move left so we get the current x coordinate compare it to 0 if we are equal to 0 then we don't want to move left any further and we get out otherwise we can decrement or decrease a and store it into our two um, x coordinates of our two sprites so hopefully as long as I've made any um, silly mistakes we can save this and go build and it's successful down there so then we can build up bring up our emulator and obviously make sure when you've got this the cartridge slot the file you're looking at is in the directory see I've started in the start directory and it's mega blast ROM we want so it comes up you've seen this part before in the previous episode um, we have our title screen we press fire to begin uh, we can see our ship there that's everything happened before but now when we press left and right our ship moves and at a constant rate because it's going it's tied to the refresh rate of the screen and it, it's at a reasonable rate if you wanted to, to move faster you'd need to um, you know make the value go uh, two instead of one and we'll look at that when we look at the uh, firing the bullet because you want the bullets to go reasonably quickly so there we go we've we've added some movement to our game so I'll just uh, stop that and pop it down so the next thing uh, moving on we want to do so just go back up here next we want to do we want to see whether the player has fired a bullet so we'll get rid of that so that will enable it now we need to put in this fire player bullet routine I'll grab the code from over here my example just gonna put this here. it doesn't matter what order things are in as long as they're in a clear uh, space away from other things right so check for a player bullet firing so we're not the most correct English in the world so obviously this label has to match what we called here and notice um, I'm using subversion now because of the color highlighting that makes it much clearer for me to show you and I like it as an editor as well so you can use any text editor you want um, so fire player bullet they match it's, that's going to call that right make sure there is not already a bullet so we're going to use the third sprite so four bytes per sprite so sprite table plus eight will give us the third sprite if its y coordinate is 209 which is basically makes any sprite invisible 
um, then it's available. But if it's not 209, so return non-zero, we return. And you can't fire, an, so we can only fire one bullet at a time in this game. Um, obviously things get a bit more complicated if you want to have more than one um, bullet on the screen. Now, there's a different function for testing the fire buttons, it's called Joy Test. Um, compare it to zero, and if it is zero, we return the button, the fire button isn't pressed. So now, fire a bullet, set Y based on the player ship. So we grab the um, current position of the player ship, we subtract six from it because we want the bullet to appear above the ship and we load that into the Y coordinate of the bullet. Then we get the X coordinate of the player ship, put it in A. We add six because we want the bullet to appear in the middle of the sprite. If we didn't do that it would appear on the left and we store that into the X coordinate of the um, bullet sprite. And then we set the bullet pattern, which out of um, our t table of sprite shapes is 24. You divide that by 4 to get, because we're using 16 by 16 sprites, so each sprite takes up 4 patterns. Uh, so I've got to increment this number by 4. So you divide it by 4 to get the, the, uh, the pattern number, and we store that in that location. And then we set the bullet colour, which is 11, which is a yellow or Gold, more gold yellow colour and we put them there and that's all we do so that would if we um, just do this routine now so let's save and build now bring up the emulator again we press play press fire to begin and it's already detected our fire so see the um, yellow bullet there and we can't fire another one so that codes working fine and the, and the bullet appeared right above our ship. So I'll just stop that. And now we can move on to our next part. So next, we come up here, and now we want to move the player bullet. So once again, I'll come down here. Just go and grab the code. This is actually the shortest of the three routines we've looked at. Right, now to move our player bullet. So every, every tick, we want well first uh, we're coming to this player bullet routine we want to make sure that the player bullet is actually on the screen otherwise there's no point moving it so we go and get once again the y coordinate of the bullet of the sprite if it's 209 so it's equal to that then it's not on the screen we shouldn't move it now decrease the bullet's y position so i have decremented a three times um, decremented is actually quite a fast instruction um, I believe that is a little faster than just going sub 3. Um, it takes up one more byte of memory though, so sub 3 would take up one less byte of memory, but really we're not going to run out of ROM space writing this game, so we don't need to worry. This, as I keep on saying with Z80, there are always multiple ways of doing things. And um, not all of, you know, uh, there's no real wrong way, um, and we aren't going to run in any, into any performance difficulties with this game, so we're fine. Right, we decrease it four times, we compare it with four, now once again we're decreasing it by three, so you're never going to particularly get an exact match on a thing, so we need to use the carry, so if there's no carry then that's okay, otherwise the bullet has reached the top of the screen, we need to hide it, so we set the Y coordinate to 209, so that'll make the bullet disappear, and then we save that back into the sprites memory. So let's see that in action. Compile and run and there's our bullet. Move over here, fire the bullet again, hold and automatically it has the ability to continually fire when we hold down the button um, to stop auto fire. Um, you need to actually um, program in for that as well but for this particular game I reckon auto fire will be great and that bullet's moving at a reasonable speed especially since we'll want to you know we'll have lots of objects coming down at us 
So there we go, we have made our game do something. We've made a ship move left and right, and we have detected and fired and then moved a bullet. So we actually achieved a lot of stuff in this episode. Um, so hope everybody's enjoying this episode. Remember, full support stuff on my website, uh, article and download pack. Now, um, the download packs will be for the Coleco for the moment. I will uh, retrofit uh, MSX versions once we make a bit more progress. There's only some very minor changes. Those feeling confident can go back to the previous episodes. You only need to change um, how the joystick is detected to get it working. But I will supply a MSX version later on. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.